Good morning, everybody. My name is Nicole Jordan, and I am uh, the team liaison for the Google Lunar X Prize. Um, I want to start by thanking the foundation for putting this wonderful panel together. And I'm particularly honored to be here today to be moderating the Google Lunar X Prize panel, where we will take a look at the entrepreneurial future of these companies on the moon. But to be doing it on the 40th um, anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, it's um, it's fantastic. So with that being said, um, let me see a show of hands from the audience of who was born at least by 1969. <laughs> who is at least five years old by 1969. So uh, I find this um, results to be very interesting because today we are celebrating uh, such a big milestone in the history of space, but yet, through some research, I found that 61% of Americans' population today was not even five years old um, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. And since then, uh, George W. Bush set up a course for us to go back to the moon by 2020 to either have a longer stay, to do a man outpost in the moon, to maybe have a flight platform for uh, flights into deep space such as Mars, but uh, to me it's frustrating and disappointing to see that since 1969 not much has happened and um, what's worth 2020 is only 11 years um, away. So today my colleagues and I are here to tell you that we're not only going to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, but we're going to celebrate the fact that we're going to go back to the moon. Um, Moon 2.0 is in place, and um, we are going to tell you today how we're going to make it happen. Um, we have a group of um, entrepreneurs and, and innovative thinkers, and what we have been doing for the past couple of years is asking ourselves the question of uh, how do we go back to the moon faster and in a more economically manner, and how do we... Um, allow for everybody on Earth to also follow these missions. Well, Google and the x -Race Foundation have joined forces and we have come up with um, an answer and we have created a competition where we will challenge the private sector to uh, take us back to the moon. I'm going to go out on a limb and just uh, assume that most of you are familiar with the x -Race Foundation and our concept of incentive prices, but for those of you that are new to this room, the reason why we're here today is because through our innovative price concept, we um, wanted to accelerate the exploration of space and we demonstrated it with the Ansari X, X Prize that got uh, won in 2004. 26 teams from seven different countries had to take three passengers, demonstrate that they could take three passengers up to 100 kilometers, land back um, and land safely on Earth and do it again within two weeks. Uh, this prize was very successful. It was won by Scale Composites and Birth Rutan, and it has not only given us um, a name to our brand, but it has created the reason why most of us get together at these conferences, which is the uh, commercial space flight uh, opportunity. So today, with the $30 million Google Lunar X Prize designed and managed by the X Prize Foundation, we are going to challenge the private sector to put a rover, um, a robot, back in the moon. And we're especially going to challenge the way we're going to ex explore for the next decade the space frontier. This is the largest international incentive space prize right now. And uh, in order to win this competition, the teams have to put the rover in the moon have it rove around the lunar surface for half a kilometer or a third of a mile, send back to Earth what we call the moon cast, which is uh, around one gigabyte of high definition video and still images. So pretty easy, right? Um, right now we have 19 teams from 42 different countries. And what is most amazing is we have countries that do not even have a history in space, such as uh, Romania and Malaysia. So we are opening a new frontier. Um, we're very thankful to all the teams that have registered. We're thankful to Google for giving us um, the support to be able to start in this endeavor. So without further ado, I'm going to let um, our panelists introduce themselves 
and tell you a little bit about their companies, where they are today in the competition, and then we're going to start um, a series of questions. I have collected some questions through Twitter. Hi, Bob. Sorry, <laughs> Through Twitter, and uh, I have uh, some que a question that was uh, given to me by the ISU students. As you know, NASA Ames is also ho host hosting the International Space University summer session, uh, as well as the Singularity uh, University. So, um, let me um, start then with. Uh, do you have <coughs> Fred um, or M Mike Joyce from Next Gen? Sure. Well, I'd just like to uh, thank the uh, conference for inviting us here today. I look forward to talking about what we're doing. I, uh, like Nikki said, I'm Mike Joyce from Next Giant Leap. I represent uh, one of the earlier teams. I think we were about the fifth to register. We uh, started off as the mystery team. Then last December, we went ahead and re released to the public our, our official team name. We were the, uh, as I said, Next Giant Leap. <clears throat> and we're basically a, a consortium. We have four strategic partners that are, are the core of our team. Sierra Nevada Corporation is the first company we brought on board, and they're, <clears throat> they're a small sat company. They re recently acquired Microsat Systems Incorporated as well as Space Dev. And they're using their uh, current, well, let me back up just a little bit. Right now they have an, a, a contract to build 18 Orbcom satellites. Now that that's bus has already had a lot of engineering done on that, and our concept involves taking that bus and modifying it to become a lunar lander. Uh, we're also working with Draper Laboratory. Some of you may know Draper from the Apollo program. They did the original guidance, navigation, and control for the uh, lunar landers, and they'll be doing the guidance, navigation, and control for us as well. We're uh, also very happy to be working with MIT the students there, uh, working under Dr. Jeffrey Hoffman, who's a five-time space shuttle astronaut, are working on a prototype lander that we can fly on Earth under 1G conditions that will simulate lunar uh, conditions and allow us to develop our guidance, navigation, and control type software and some of the uh, integration issues. And then we're also working with a company called Aurora Flight Sciences Corporation, and they're well known for unmanned aerial vehicles, so that has a lot of uh, carry over to what we're doing, and they're working closely with our MIT students as well. Uh, next slide. This is a, a concept that we are currently developing. What you see there is basically fairly familiar. You, you get the stack into low Earth orbit. You have a translunar injection stage. You have a lunar orbit insertion stage. And then you have a, a descent stage, which brings the hopper on top, the part that lands, uh, near, to the, near to the lunar surface and then the hopper detaches and does the rest of the landing itself. Uh, because we've already developed the guidance, navigation, and control to land on the surface, we don't see that it's necessary to also deploy a rover payload. Instead, we will use the hopper to translate the required 500 meters distance uh, that, the, that the prize uh, demands. And the concept uh, that you see there has been not completely fleshed out, but we, we do believe right now that we can fit that into a Falcon 1E. So we're not going to try to build our own launch vehicle. We think that would be um, too much to do, too much to hope for in the next two years. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Next slide. And that's just a couple of eye candy pictures there in the bottom left. You kind of see the little hopper. That's a full-scale mock-up we had, uh, had out at, at uh, MIT a couple, couple weeks ago. And in the upper corner, you can kind of see the Tolaris project, which is what the students have called their, their 1G uh, flight demonstrator model, and it's it's undergoing some early flight testing there. We're hoping to have that completely tested out here, probably by the end of spring semester next year. So once again, I'd just like to thank you all for having me here, and I'll pass it on to the next next group.